dictionary, shall we? You don't know what a word means, you go to the dictionary, you look it up. No, not that type of dictionary. Dictionaries that containers and keys, associations between keys and values. You know two other types of containers in Python. What do you know? The first one is? List. List. Second one is? Sense. Pow. Now you got the third one, and it's called dictionaries. Okay, keys and values. Keys are unique, but a value may be associated with several keys. Gosh, that's very good. That's work. John, Ann, Mike, and Mary all have salaries. John makes $15,000. John is a key. $15,000 is a value. Ann makes $30,000. Ann is a key. $30,000 is a value. Mike is a key. Mike makes $12,000. Mary is another key, and she makes... $15,000. Values can be repeated, keys can't. Got it? If I want to know how much Mary makes, I can go to my dictionary and say, yo, Mary, how much you make? And it's going to come back and tell me 15 grand. Okay. Dictionary structure is also known as a map, for very obvious reasons. It stores the keys, the values, and the associations between them. So three things are stored. Keep value and also the fact that there's a little bit. How do you actually create dictionary documents? Excellent question. Each key value pair is separated by a colon. You enclose the key value pair in braces. Braces are these little squiggly things. Uh, just as you would when forming a set. When the braces contain the key value pairs, they denote a dictionary, not a set. So these things sort of look the same as the set. Okay? So Python has to look into it and go, are you doing a set or are you doing a dictionary? The only ambiguous case is the empty set. By a convention, it denotes an empty dictionary, not an empty set. Okay, so a little squiggle, squiggle, just by itself. You can create a duplicate copy of the dictionary using the dict command. So dict salaries means I have a new version of salaries. So this is what it would look like to create a dictionary. I have a variable that's going to be my dictionary. Salaries equals squiggly bracket, quote, John, quote, colon, 15,000, quote, Ann, quote, 30,000, quote, Mike, quote, 12,000, quote, Mary, quote, do all that work, and I've got myself a dictionary that has all those salary information in it. Fantastic. Wonderful. How do you actually get stuff out of the dictionary after you've created it? Well, you use your old buddy in the subscript operator, the little square brackets, right? We've used those since list, man. We're old friends with that one, okay? The statement print, quote, and salary is, quote, comma, here it comes, here it comes, salaries, square bracket, and square bracket, and. So salaries is our dictionary. We're doing something that looks suspiciously like list, except for the fact that we're providing it a key value. Provide the key value, and it'll give us back the value value, which is sort of an awkward thing to say. But that would actually print 3,000, 30,000. Now, the dictionary is not a sequential type containing like a list. So we talked about sets. What was one of the interesting characteristics about sets? If I put something in first, second, and third into a set, how are they organized in the set? Not, right? It's a bunch of beer cans in a bag in the back of a pickup truck that you've just driven down a bouncy road, right? Can you say that there's a beer can in the bag? Yes. yes. Can you say which one's on top, which one's on bottom? No. You got not a clue in your mind. Who knows? But you know it's good enough. Even though the social operators use the dictionary, you cannot access the items by index or position, a value can only be accessed using its associated key. After you put it in the dictionary, the only way you can get it out is by using the key. The key supplied to the subject operator must be a valid key to the dictionary, otherwise you get what's called a key error exception. It means that your program will die. Ah! To find out whether or not a key is present in the dictionary, you use in or not in. If an is in salaries, which is our dictionary, print and salary is, oh here we go, salaries and. <coughs> Else print and salaries not in those. So once again, we're in a little danger territory here, right? If you go looking in a dictionary for something that isn't there, Python's going to just die at you. So what you have to do is you have to check before you go looking and say, yo, you got this in there? And if it back and says, yes, I do, then you go for it. Default value. So look, if I go looking for like Mike's salary, number equals salaries get, get, Mike, and then I put this value here, 17,000. If I don't find a salary for Mike, not in the dictionary, the default value, 17,000 is what will be returned. So if I need a number, whether or not it's in there or not, I can use default values to get something back. Right? Pretty simple to do. Adding and modifying items, you can change dictionary's contents after it's been created. This is not carving things in stone by any stretch of the imagination. Okay? So you can stick something new into a dictionary that you've already created. Salaries, Lisa, 
equals 25,000, which means I've just added another item to my salary database for Lisa that I can look up and she can make it 25 grand. Okay? If it turns like, oh wait, Lisa, she's not making 25 grand, she's making 17 grand. I should have realized that. Okay? I can go back and I can say salaries and Lisa equals 17,000, which will change this to this. So now when I look up using the key Lisa, the value that will be returned will be 17,000. That's it. All right, another way to create a dictionary. So you can start out by creating a null dictionary, squiggly, squiggly bracket, almost like creating a blank list. And then you can add everything you want. So salary John is 15, salary Ann is 30, salary Mike is 12, salary Mary is 15. Bam. Run through those four commands, and suddenly I've got a dictionary that has four entries in it. Sir? Um, could you the plus and equals operator with this? The increment values? You know, you actually can't. And the reason, well, let's think about this for a moment. I guess I could use salaries equals, I almost have to be using like a modifier there, like the dot add. You know what I mean? In this particular case, I'm saying the whole dictionary now has this entry. So I don't think it would be appropriate to use the plus equals. Because I don't want to do plus equals 15,000. I don't want to put 15,000 in the dictionary. I need to actually put the match pair of John and 15,000, right? I could do something potentially like, Right now, there might be a dot add one where I can do salaries equals seven, but I'm not getting any benefit out of that whatsoever. Well. That's how the cache is using plus equal, right? So the dictionary is not a good candidate for plus equal. Removing items, great. So I've got a bunch of stuff in my dictionary. Ah, I got too much stuff in my dictionary. I want to make it smaller. Well, we use our old friend, Mr. Pop. You remember Pop? We got Pop. She get stuff off the list. Salaries pop Mike. And when you do this, it's going to return Mike's salary. So if Mike's out of there, he's gone. But by the way, by executing this, if you want it, you can get the salary. So you can say Mike's salary equals salary. That's all you can do about that. Adding uh, avoiding removal errors. Okay, so once again, you can get yourself into trouble. If you try to remove something from a dictionary that's not in the dictionary. I mean, it makes sense, right? Yo, I thought when you remove that from the dictionary, yo, it's not in the dictionary. Okay? So you can get into some trouble here if you're not careful. You gotta double check. See if Mike is in salaries. Okay, so I know you're in the dictionary. Now go ahead and pop Mike. We go a little bit farther on this particular idea though here. If you want to list everything out in a dictionary, print salaries for key in salaries. For key in the dictionary that is salaries, print key. Okay. So this is what we get. John, Ann, Mike, Mary. Notice that there are no particular order. You can't make any statements about the order that they're going to come out. Dictionaries have no order. They do have content, okay, so that's good. But what order they're in, you don't know. In fact, they can change at any point in time. You can't say. Order is optimized for efficiency, which may or may not have anything to do with the way that you want. You can sort it, of course, but you can't say anything about how it's stored just naturally. All right. This is the big one. You ready for it? So you now have three types of containers. Let's review. You've got lists, your old buddy, your old friend, Mr. List. Prerequisites equal to CMP2271, you got yourself a title, and you got three credit hours. You know how to create a list. Print values, square bracket, five. You do printing element at index number five. Cool. We're very comfortable with lists. Last time we did sets. Cheese pizza equals creamy garlic, parmesan sauce, cheese, and toasted parmesan. Fantastic. If toasted parmesan in cheese pizza. So we know how to look into a set, determine something that's on the set, and take action based on it. And today, you just learned about salaries. John, 15,000, Ann, 30,000, Mike, 12,000, and Mary, 15,000. Print and salary is name of the dictionary, salaries, and Ann, and that'll crank out 30 grand. So you've got three different containers you can use in any particular situation. The question is, oh, what should I use? Question. So we found out last time that sets are fantastic tools when you don't want to worry about duplicates. Now let me ask you a question. In homework number three, wasn't part of that assignment to figure out how many unique cities people were coming from? And did you do some fancy stuff like if I've seen Lakeland before, then don't add Lakeland to the list of cities that I'm building? Did you do something like that? Now, God's honest truth, would not have not been easier if you had created the set for city names and just ran through all your customers and just threw everybody's city name into the set. 
Just throw it all into it. Fifteen names get thrown into that set. And then when you're all done with that, we'll print out whatever's in the set, right? And what would you have had to print out? Orlando, Tampa, and Lakeland, right? And the effort on your part would have been almost nothing, right? So sets could have been used there pretty easily, right? Another interesting thing on dictionaries, dictionaries, a good time to use dictionaries anytime your data has structure. If I was at a track meet and people were running different heats and sets and something like that, I have Mike ran it in 50 seconds and 40 seconds and 20 seconds, okay? Uh, that almost be like a dictionary thing, right? I can put Mike's times into the dictionary. I can also put Mike's times into a list, but if I put it into a dictionary, then at any point in time I can say, show me Mike's times, and I can just say Mike, and dump out all the stuff having to do with Mike. So once again, you take a look at what kind of information you have that you want to save. If it's structured, dictionaries is a good place. If you want to have no repeats, a set is a great place. And sort of your default or your fallback is lists. Make sense? Three powerful tools in your backpack, or as you like to say in this class, in your toolbox, because now you got dictionaries in there. What do you yeah, what's that? What's that? What's that picture? It's a drill. It's a handle. Have you never seen a handle? No, I've seen it. What do you think? Is this isn't you to see the, what, the power tools? Yeah. That's a handle, man. <laughs> we probably just got to see like Saw or some sort of horror movie. We probably see whatever we're talking about. Well, we have a handle, we have an electric drill. Because different jobs require different things. Because if you're standing in a puddle of water, the last thing you want to be using is see, you didn't think about that. Yes. Cool. What did we do today? We talked about creating dictionaries. We talked about getting stuff out of dictionaries. We talked about searching dictionaries to find out what's in there. And finally, we talked about getting stuff out of the dictionary when we were done with it. Fantastic. What else could we possibly talk about in this class? External efforts. There's a grand world of code out there, Important. and it's right there for you to yeah. use. Yeah, <laughs> We've got to figure out what's there, and then how we bring it in, and how we use it when we do that. Fantastic. And we'll do that next week. Have a great weekend, guys. <laughs>